By now you've got the idea that measurement is very important to us. And so one of the things we want to do is understand what sort of things can happen in a measurement system. To do that, we have to understand what is a measurement system. And so we see measurement systems usually have sort of two components. One is the human operator. This is the person observing, recording, and interfacing with a device. The second is the machine device, or an automated computer system that's collecting data or feedback systems. In a hybrid system, we'll have both, where we have a device and a human being interpreting it and recording the information. Now, when we take a look at this, and we're taking a look at data over time, what we see is that we can have a continuous stream of data, and then we'll see all of the variations, or we could take samples out. And many times we'll take samples out of data because it's convenient, and we do that each sample then is going to be identifying a specific set of data conditions that prevailed at the time the sample was taken. It's going to be based on the location, geography, time, magnitude, and the different logical components of the process that were active at the time, like material coming from one supplier, or the set different material coming from the same supplier, or coming from a different supplier. So what we start seeing is only part of our data really is observed as sort of long-term. Most data observations will tend to be short-term. And so as we start taking a look, the combination of these data observations over time will give us, through sampling these rational subgroups, will give us some representation of the overall expectation. Some subgroups may be sampled, wow, worst. Some, best, Bob. And so the idea is, as we build these measurement systems, can we rely on the measurement system integrity to be reporting in the same way when it's giving us a wow reading as when it's giving us a Bob reading? So what is happening is observed variation really has two different components. It has the actual process variation, and that could be either short-term or long-term variation. So short-term variation is what's happening in the short-term. Long-term, we see more effects of change happening. So, for instance, we might see things that are flaws coming into faults and failures over a longer period of time. Short term, we're just going to see the instantaneous effect of many of those effects. So we want to understand both of those components in the actual measurement. However, if we take a look at measured variation, what we see is variance can come due to the instrument. Is it actually stable? Is it linear? Can it repeat the measurement? Um, it, has it been calibrated so we can actually trust the reference? Or variation may be due to the operators. Variation within, within an operator means Greg, in analyzing something, doesn't measure it the same way two times. Or it can be between operator. And so we say, here's Greg measuring it, and there's Yukas measuring it, and he measures it differently every time. Or we can have a combination of both. And that's what we mean by reproducibility the ability of the human being to use the system and to reproduce the results somebody else has gotten. Repeatability is talking about the measurement of the system and the different components in there. Now, when we take a look at a measurement system design, there's two different ways we can do this. One way is where we call, call a cross design. So in a cross measurement system, what we're going to do is measure all of the people who are the operators, or the, the observers of the measurement system, looking at exactly the same parts in each of those different locations. So maybe it's using the same measurement devices or the same pieces of equipment, and that way we can compare each person with each different piece of equipment and see very clearly the variation within the people and the variation between the people the variation within the equipment and between the equipment, as well as any relationship that may exist across the people and the equipment. The second type of process is called a nested design. And a nested design is say, where you see where we are saying there's actually something I can't go quite do the cross design. So in a nested design, I may be taking a look at, let's just say, different factories. So factory A, B, and C. I have measurement equipment. I have production lines and production equipment at each one. So I can't really take the same parts each place. Um, I can't really take the same operators or the same equipment. But within each factory, I could have a cross design. Okay? And then what I can do is compare the output of the factories for some sort of standard part. So maybe I standardize on the material or I standardize on the supplier or the lot code of information, and then I'm going to compare them. And that way I can see the difference between the factories at the factory level. That type of design is called a nested design. 
And that's a little bit more difficult to analyze than the cross design. So the favored way to deal with a measurement system performance, and particularly for a green belt, is a cross design, where all of the people in the equipment in, in the process who are actually operating the process are evaluated in terms of their measurement capability for the same set of parts using the same uh, measurement system. Now, when we talk about repeatability, what we're talking about is the same people using the same equipment, so same parts, same operator, same particular uh, measures of units, the same setup conditions, and, and the same short-term variation. And the ideal case is that we would see this grouped very close together, and that says it's high repeatability. So here, <clears throat> what we would expect to see is that the measurement system itself is capable of doing the right things. Reproducibility, though, is where we use different people at different times, and we see that now the variation is shifting around, as we see on the targets on this PowerPoint slide. So reproducibility is we have differences due to people taking measurements at different points in time in different ways. And what we see is the variation within the operator as well as the variation between the operators. So this is measuring the human component of the measurement system. So how do we create a measurement system? Well, the very first thing we have to do is we have to create an operational definition. We have to know explicitly what it is we're measuring, what are the different steps, and then how do we actually take those measurements. Then we have to do what's called the attribute agreement analysis. Are human beings going to code these the same way with respect to decision criteria? So do you see good and bad the same way I see good and bad? If we're talking about interpretation of data, do you interpret data the same way I interpret data? So this is the calibration of the human part. Next, we take a look at the measurement system. So that was dealing with reproducibility. We take a look at the measurement system, and now we're dealing with repeatability. Has the measurement system physically been calibrated? Is it linear over the scale? Is it stable in time? Does it have enough digits, if you will, to properly discriminate? Does the system have any bias built in? And after we've done all of those things, then we compare the reproducibility of the human component, the repeatability of the machine component, and that's when we do what's called a gauge R&R study. So the gauge R&R is checking reproducibility and repeatability and the combination of the two factors in the ability to do a measurement system. Now, in Minitab, there's a number of different types of measurement analysis that are capable. We can do the attribute agreement analysis. We can also do attribute gauge R&R study, where we take a look at not just do we have the same definitions, but do we make the same judgment uh, compared to the physical scientific measurement as we do with our conclusion drawn about that measurement. We can take a look at gauge bias and linearity and see, is there any change happening in time due to the measurement system? We can have a variable gauge R&R, crossed, where we're taking a look at variable measures, scientific measures on a variable scale, and then we're saying, how do they change across the units or the measurement systems as well as the operators? We could also do, in Minitab, a variable gauge study nested where the same measurement system and process and analysis is done at different facilities. And we're asking ourselves, are all of these factories or production lines measuring in the same way? And finally, we can take a look at a gauge run chart. And the gauge run chart is evaluating the measurement system over a period of time and saying, are we actually operating this measurement system in a consistent manner? Now, this is very important when we come to the control phase, and we want to make sure that we are understanding exactly what is happening are we keeping the measurement system stable over time? So the run chart is able to tell us that. So these are all of the different things happening inside of Minitab. The main thing that you'll be using as a green belt is called the gauge R&R study crossed. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to pause in this video and we'll come back in our next video and talk about that component of a measurement systems analysis.